What's up y'all? As you can see, I'm out here at the range. It turned out to be an overcast breezy day, which is a heck of a lot better than the 90 some degrees sweltering humidity we've had out here for a while. I've been doing some jelly testing out here and a few other things. And this one right here is going to be a 40 Smith & Wesson test that'll hopefully put some speculation out there to rest. So as you can see, we got the contraption set up out here. I got my chrono, which is probably going to be the most important part of this test. And I also got two blocks of gel here. Now I've done a couple tests in this first block so it's definitely got some tracks in it but i should have plenty of room to put these shots where i need them to see what we need to see on this test here but as you can see from the title we're testing out some 40 smith and wesson ammo but we're gonna run it through a 40 and a 10 millimeter and see if there's any kind of performance difference those of y'all who've been watching my channel for a while know that i used to test 40 out of my glock 20 10 millimeter because i didn't have anything chambered in 40 i, I really didn't want to go out and buy 40s just to test it when i could run it through the glock 10 millimeter well of course you know several people made the comment that oh you're losing performance you're losing pressure because it's head spacing off the extractor you're losing this you're having to jump to the lands this that and the other thing so um you know it makes sense that that could be a possibility that there might be some performance loss there but honestly i'm pretty skeptical about it so i'm not 100 percent sure if that's true or not but we're gonna find out here today so what i did was just pick me out a random 40 smith and wesson round i just chose the critical defense 165 grain one reason i picked these is because i hadn't actually done a video testing these in 40 yet so i figured we could kill two birds with one stone here so i got the hornady critical defense what i'm going to do is run them out of the glock 22 which is the 40 cal glock uh the 4.49 inch barrel on this glock 22 and then we're gonna run some out of the glock 20 which is the 10 millimeter chamber glock and this is a 4.61 inch barrel so you're talking literally 0.12 barrel difference so not even quite an eighth of an inch longer barrel in the glock 20 so this is pretty much as close as you're going to get to see if there truly is a difference but i can definitely say this is one i'm personally interested in seeing the results of so let me get this stuff set up and let's check this out all right, y'all, let's see what we get here. So I'm going to run five rounds across the chrono through each one of these, five through the 22 and five through the 20. So I'm going to start with the Glock 22 first, just for one chamber, then 40. 1163. 11.49. 11.56. That's another 11.56. And then 11.57, so not too shabby. Let's check the average out. All right, so a five round average running out of the Glock 22 chambered in 40 Smith & Wesson is 1157 feet per second. So let me reset this and let's check out the Glock 20. All right, let's check these things out and see what they're moving out of the Glock 20. I didn't mention, but the box is calling for 1175 on the velocity on those. So that Glock 22 came awful close. It was right there at it. So let's see what this Glock 20 does, y'all. The moment of truth. Eleven forty-four. Now I got an error. Eleven forty-two. Eleven forty. Eleven thirty-six. Let me grab one more round. They sure consistent. I can tell you that so far. All right, let's run this fifth one, y'all. And 1141, so that seems, if I remember correctly, awful close. Let's go down there and check that average. All right, so the five round average running the 40 Smith & Wesson through the Glock 20 is 1140 feet per second. And if you remember out the Glock 22, it was 1157. So you're talking about 17 feet per second difference is all you've got. You got 17 feet per second on average more from the Glock 22, the chambered in Glock 40. Now, what I will say also so to go along with that is each shot uh, going back and forth between the 22 and the 20, every shot out of the 22 was about 10 to 15 feet per second faster. So looking at a pattern there, it does look like it does make a little bit of difference. But when you're talking about 15, to 10, between 10 and 17 feet per second difference, I think that's absolutely negligible. I don't think that's making any kind of performance difference at all. But I don't think we're going to see any difference between these two in the jail. But let me get this reset and y'all know what time it is. 
All right, y'all, it's does it really matter jelly time. I'm gonna put one round from each down into the gel down there. We're gonna start out with the Glock 22 first. So this is the actual 40 Smith & Wesson chambered Glock. All right, perfect hit down there. Let me make sure it stayed in the gel. All right, y'all, perfect placement down there in the jail. It definitely stayed in, and it went in there with some authority. I can tell you that right now. That's a nice-looking performance. But let's try out of this 10-millimeter Glock 20. I'm going to try to go towards the bottom, but it's going to be tricky. If I screw this one up, it's going to be a mess down there in the, in the block. Ah! Went a little bit too far to the left. I went out the side. Now it's really gonna make it tricky. I'm gonna try to go a little bit, a little bit above it and to the right, but this, this is gonna be a tricky one, y'all. All right, I went to the right. I hope that one stayed in there. Let me go down there and check that out. All right, y'all, let's take a look at what we got down here. It's a little bit of a mess, but it's not as bad as it seems at first glance. So let me show you what we got. So the top one here, that's the one out of the Glock 22. Of what I can say first off, these 40 Smith & Wesson critical defense rounds are some fantastic rounds. I can just tell you already just by looking and seeing what I'm seeing here. But anyway, the Glock 22 at the top came in here, fantastic wound channel, just incredible amount of disruption there. That disruption carries on out through the entire channel now it did shed what looks like some uh jacket here i don't think i see any lead but i definitely see some jackets there's a piece there a piece there there's a piece back here so shed some of its jacket came on up through here and it's turned around nearly backwards facing kind of downhill as you see here it still has its red insert and it looks like it's expanded pretty nicely from what i can see now the one down here on the bottom i got y'all at kind of an angle so you can see behind that little goof up i made on the first shot this is the one out of the glock 20 10 millimeter so i hit just too close to the edge it was stayed in a little ways and then come out right here so that little bit of first track that y'all seeing right here underneath the main part that's the one that came out the side but right behind it same exact level right behind it is the one that stayed in there again fantastic wound channel really really nice disruption again carries all the way through the channel all that disruption action now on this one, interestingly enough, I don't see any material left behind, no jacket or anything, but it comes on out here. It looks like it's almost the same orientation as far as pointing like backwards and down. Uh, the little red insert stayed with it as well. As far as penetration, it looks like this one actually went about a quarter of an inch or so further, just a little bit further. And then for uh, expansion, it looks just fantastic, just like the other one did. Now, as far as the penetration measurements, the one one out of the Glock 22, we got 14 and a quarter inches of penetration. The one out of the Glock 20, we got 14 and about five eighths. So just a little over a quarter inch more out of the one from the Glock 20, but fantastic performance on both of these. Just a quick different angle so you can see that Glock 20 track more clearly. As you can see, it's right behind that little piece that went out there. And then it comes down here, you can see it sitting backwards. And then again, there's the one out of the Glock 22. Just fantastic disruption. I mean, that's just some crazy nasty wound disruption. All right, y'all, let's check out these projectiles. So right here, this is out of the Glock 20. Right here is out of the Glock 22. As you can see, I can not I can barely tell any difference. I, well, honestly, with my naked eye, I can't tell any difference. I can't tell any difference in the expansion. As you can see, all the different angles, they look exactly the same. From the side, they look the same. The pedals are peeled back basically to the base of the projectile. So it's just, it, honestly, you can, you can barely tell any difference, any difference in them, which is about what I expected being so close in velocity. But either way, some fantastic expansion on both of these. As y'all can see, I mean, you can't get, they expanded beyond the point of max expansion almost. You can see that little piece in the center. It's almost poked up because the lead peeled back so far on both of these rounds. But let's get us some measurements on these things. Like I say, I know this one out of the Glock 22 lost some material. It started at 165 
and it's at 161.6. If we add a little red filler, we're at 162 even. So lost some material there for sure. Like I say, I can see the jacket in the gel. The one out of the Glock 20, I don't think it lost much of anything. We're at 163.8. And if we add a little filler back, that puts us at 164.4. So no loss on that one that I can tell at all. Now, as far as expansion, I believe they're going to be pretty similar. We'll start out with the one from the Glock 22 first. Now, these things do have some pedals hanging off like that, and I'm going to measure those just because, I mean, it would be sticking out. So if you measure that one, you got 732. Now, the main part of the lead, you're looking at 626 and 629. The one out of the Glock 20 has got a lot more pieces of that jacket. So if we do that jacket measurement there, the full width, that's 0.791. Um, this one's got another piece of jacket here, 0.759. And then if you measure just the lead expansion, we're at 645 and 635. So on, as far as the, the lead itself, they're pretty much identical. You just got the differences with the uh, jacket pedals hanging off. But there you go, y'all. The Critical Defense 40 Smith & Wesson fired from a 40 and a 10 millimeter chambered Glock. Is there a difference? I guess technically there probably is a difference based on those speed differences we saw. Uh, but as far as practical performance, there's not a bit of difference in these things. There's not a bit of difference as far as practical performance running 40 Smith & Wesson from a 40 chambered Glock and a 10 millimeter chambered Glock. I mean, y'all can see it right here for yourself. If you didn't know ahead of time that these were fired from two different chamber pistols there's no way you would be able to tell all right y'all that was a pretty interesting jelly test and one that definitely answered some questions that i had so is there a difference when you run 40 smith and wesson out of a handgun chambered for 40 versus one chambered for 10 millimeter technically yes uh from the chrono readings out here it wasn't just the average that was higher out of the glock 22 each shot was about 10 to 15 feet per second higher from the glock 22 versus the glock 20. now as far as there being a difference when it comes to practical use I personally see very, very little difference here. That little small difference in velocity made no appreciable difference that I could tell in the jail. You actually got a little bit more penetration from the Glock 20 that was moving whatever it was, 17 feet per second slower, and you got the same expansion or a little bit more because it kept all of the pedals where the one in the Glock 22 lost a couple. So yes, technically it does make a difference, but as far as practical use, you see virtually no difference between them. But y'all let me know what y'all's thoughts are down in the comments we kind of glazed right over the performance of the critical defense uh but that stuff was absolutely fantastic so let me know what y'all think about that below and let me know if some of y'all carry that critical defense in your 40s if you did enjoy this video take a second if you would and hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel and make sure you click that bell notification icon so you can get notified when i upload new stuff check out my affiliate links down below in the video description you know the deal with the amazon if you shop through there anyway hit that link up first you go straight through amazon like normal from there and anything you buy after clicking that link i get a kickback from them towards the channel if you want to get yourself some fantastic ear pro and save a lot of money doing it hit those axle links down below you can save a pile of money on those links instead of going straight through their site i appreciate all my range gang members and every single one of y'all out there that shows support for the channel i got a ton of good stuff coming y'all's way so make sure you stay tuned for that and in the meantime stay safe stay prepared and i'll see you soon